Hi everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Roshni and this is Betty Grew Up. So today's topic is definitely a really important one and I want to get right into it. Um, but one thing that you should know is probably just a little bit about my story. So I was actually born in Nairobi, Kenya, but I am Indian. So the last few generations of my family um, actually lived in Kenya and grew up there. Right before I turned five, my family and I moved to Texas. Um, so I grew up in Texas between like 1999 and 2012 or so. So I, s I experienced a lot of racism. Obviously that was a while ago and there were way fewer people of color in Texas than there are now. And I grew up in like a really white suburb as well. So continuing into high school, a lot of that became internalized um, racism. And it was just, it was definitely difficult to grow up in a place that I knew wasn't my native country. I didn't ever really feel like I belonged. Um, but I also, that was the only place where I had actually fully grown up. Um, so it was kind of this constant like battle between trying to figure out who I actually was, trying to relate to my history, but also growing up in a time in a place that was completely different from my parents. Most of my extended family also ended up in London. So along with, you know, just moving continents and moving countries and growing up somewhere different, I was actually losing a lot of my extended family. Um, so I have experienced a lot of racism and microaggressions and things like that. And I'm really passionate about social activism and just the need for people to get out but at the same time i know what activist burnout feels like i know how you can just feel so attacked so frustrated so angry at what's going on and you feel like you're being bombarded by news and headlines and things happening that you can't control and everything feels just you feel like you're drowning all the time so in order to continue you know fighting the good fight and staying active in this fight and being able to avoid activist burnout, I wanted to make a video on how important it is to heal and kind of finding different ways to heal um, so that you can approach every protest, every gathering, every volunteer opportunity, anything that you do that's your own version of social activism, whether that's speaking out on social media, whether that's you know hosting workshops, no matter what you do, your work is so valuable and we definitely need your work in this world. What we don't need is for you to, you know, just feel burnt out and to feel like no one's listening and to feel hopeless and apathetic about this. And it's really difficult to, you know, continue healing and really start to heal when you feel like there's still microaggressions being thrown at you. Oh, my dog is so weird. When you feel like you don't belong, when you feel like you're constantly surrounded in like this narrative of otherness, it's really difficult to constantly show up to do the work without feeling exhausted and without feeling belittled and without feeling overlooked. It's really important to start to heal a lot of the wounds that we already have. As much as it's frustrating to see things in the headlines, I'm not saying to ignore that. I'm not saying that you can't pay attention to it if that is truly what you want to be doing. But it's still important to reflect back on your own wounds from racism, from classism, from these different things that you're fighting against and to really heal those wounds because if you are broken and fighting then every single protest, everything that you do as an activist is just going to feel overwhelming. It's going to feel like it's really easy to lose yourself. It's easier to lose your boundaries when you're in that state and that's obviously not what I want for you. That's not what anyone wants for themselves. When you are starting to heal yourself, what you need to do is you need to look back on some of your earliest memories. You don't have to start with your most painful memory at all. Obviously, if you have been through a major trauma recently, if you can see a therapist, please do that. If not, there are tons of apps these days where you can pay monthly and then text a therapist at any time. Um, so I can try and find a list of them and compile it down in the description box below. But if you are in a rural area or somewhere where it's difficult to access a therapist or it's the cost um, that's holding you back, normally two or three sessions is what it'll take to cover the cost of what you would pay for a whole month of talking to someone on that app. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and do that. Um, but if you know you have a bunch of different traumas that are different sized traumas and different sized wounds, you can start with some of the earlier ones or just some of the ones that are 
not quite as serious, that weren't quite as heavy as, as some of the biggest traumas you faced and just allow yourself to process those emotions. Obviously, I'm not asking you to revisit a memory that you're not ready for. Um, and as you feel comfortable, start to go back to your earliest memories and the first times that you came into contact with someone. Because a lot of the time what happens is that we're just trying to be us, we're just trying to live our lives, we're doing us, we're having fun, we're going about things as normal, and a lot of the times, you know, we're just kids doing what kids do and then all of a sudden we're being attacked or we're being pointed out as other or we're being discriminated against for our skin color or someone saying something completely ignorant about our family or you know whatever it is those things happen all the time and that's when you're kind of taught oh i'm not like everyone else or i'm not people don't want to think that i'm like everyone else and that's a really hurtful realization to have especially at you know four five six years old when you really start to feel like you don't believe Long and you're almost kind of forced into like this idea of escapism at such an early age where you're not even comprehending what emotions are, who you are, and you're still trying to figure out what all of these things mean and all of a sudden you're being excluded, you're having to deal with all these topics that are extremely heavy, extremely complicated. And it's a lot to take in, so start to revisit some of those memories if you can. And there's something called an associated and a dissociated fashion of looking back on your life and thinking back on your memories. So when it comes to something negative or to a difficult memory, even if it's you know something that happened 25, 30 years ago, just allow yourself to revisit it in a dissociated fashion. So what that means is that you're picturing the memory, you're picturing yourself, and you're kind of seeing it from like a third person point of view. So it's like you're watching a movie of your life and you're watching back this memory um, and that's seeing it in a dissociated sense. So that's what you should try to do. Conversely, if you're curious, an associated sense is looking at your life or at past memories while you're physically in your own body and you're actually like living through that memory and that's much healthier to do with happy memories with times that you felt proud accomplished etc so you can revisit some of these older memories and just really break it down in your adult mind and another great great tip that you can do is to connect to your inner child talk to your inner child and one of my personal favorites is to pause the memory and feel your adult self going back to your inner child on that playground in that classroom wherever the trauma happened and just giving your child your inner child a hug and giving yourself a hug in that moment in that time while that trauma was happening to you and that is just one of the most healing experiences that I found when I look back on my old memories because you can really, it allows you to connect with yourself and it allows you to be that empathetic, self-mothering person. stretch for you then what you can start doing is just to talk to your inner child um, and connect with yourself on that level so ask yourself what you were feeling you can connect with this inner child and really offer them a sense of comfort a sense of empathy so when you're a kid you don't get the full understanding of like how nuanced emotions really can be when you are an adult and you go back to those memories you can really process and think about um, what you were feeling in that moment. Was it shame? Was it anger? Was it frustration? Was it oppression? Was it um, sadness? Was it, you know, you can really break it down and then just kind of allow yourself to feel all of those emotions. And a, a lot of what healing is, is it's really uncomfortable. It's allowing yourself to be uncomfortable. It's allowing yourself to live through the pain. And once you actually live through that and process through that, it's 
out of your system and that is what I think is so beautiful and that's why spending this time and this pain is worth it. Allowing yourself to achieve emotional freedom and that is something that no one can ever take away from you. So something that you can do if it speaks to you is um, do some sort of symbolic letting go. You can um, write, the, write it out or type out the situation or type out your feelings or even write a haiku or a poem, whatever you want to do to get it off your chest. You can print the poem out and burn it. You could just write it on a page and send it to sea. You could um, let it go in a balloon. If something like that speaks to you and you want to do something symbolic where you are just letting that go and putting it out of your life forever. If you can avoid taking on a new project or taking on a major new role during this time, that would be great. Um, but something else that's important for the stuff that you absolutely do need to get done, like bills that you need to pay or little, little things like um, the trip you need to make to the grocery store, if you can plan those and just write them out on a calendar or put them in your phone um, on the day that you need to do them, just so everything is pre-planned and you're taking as much emotional weight and as much burden off of yourself as possible is really great because other than what you absolutely have to do, like absolutely go to work or absolutely pick your kids up from school, take as much weight off of yourself as possible just so that you really can allow yourself this time and this space to heal and to process through these emotions. And I gotta tell you, when I was doing a lot of my healing, I knew that I was going through something and I could feel all these emotions coming up, but I wasn't necessarily consciously like, oh, this is what healing looks like. You know, instead it was more of like, I was, I was watching a lot of Netflix, drinking a lot of tea, staying home, staying in on weekends a lot of the time. And I, I wasn't being antisocial. A lot of the times, you know, I'd be just hanging out with my boyfriend or whatever, or, you know, a few friends, but I, I wasn't trying to be unhealthy about it, but it was all I could really muster to do, but it's because the emotional work and the processing and the mental capacity that all of that took was so heavy, I I wasn't able to take on much more. I wasn't able to, you know, get up the energy to, you know, go out or be at a lot of parties and things like that because I am naturally introverted. So on top of that, healing and trying to do all of that work was, um, really scary. Don't don't put extra pressure on yourself to be social or to do these extra little things that you used to do. It's totally okay because what you're doing right now is so important. It's so beneficial for the rest of your life. It's actually physically gonna change your life. Oh, she's scared of the thunder, so she's gonna chill with me for the rest of this video. So if you can, you know, just allow yourself to just relax as much as possible. And like I said, a lot of my healing looked like just watching Netflix and hanging out or curling up with a good book and just allowing myself to experience as much self-care as possible. Um, if you know you want to revisit a lot of those memories while you're in the bathtub and that's comforting to you, feel free to do that. Allow yourself to experience the self-love and the self-compassion that you need to get through this time. The last thing that I wanted to say that's kind of the final step in this journey is truly, truly forgiving what happened to you. And forgiveness, this is so important because this is what I had wrong about forgiveness. I thought to forgive someone, you have to go up to them and tell them that you forgive them or reach out to someone and say, you know, I forgive you, but that's not what it is. Forgiveness is for your own peace and for your own benefit. So if it's, you know, a racist person that attacked you or said something terrible to you, you don't have to appease them, you don't have to tell them that it was okay, and you don't have to believe that what they did was justifiable or okay to forgive them. You just have to say, I want peace from this moment. I want peace from this pain, and I am going to let it go from my energetic field, from my auric field. That's what forgiveness truly is. It's letting go, it's saying that you deserve better, it's saying I don't deserve these chains, I don't deserve these burdens, I'm gonna let go of this pain because it does not serve me. And that is so, so powerful to be able to say that to, you know, to yourself and to give yourself that gift of emotional freedom and freedom from pain because when all of those terrible interactions are just swimming around in the deepness and darkness of your subconscious, you're just carrying that with you. You're carrying that in your energy and in your aura. You're becoming bitter about it or you're becoming angry and it's making everything in your life harder. So at the end of the day, it's really just affecting you, how you feel about these emotions. So 
Um, so yeah, it really is just about how you feel and about what you are willing to allow yourself to endure. And you don't need to hold on to these burdens or these attacks because they don't serve you and you owe it to yourself to let go of that. And then finally, a big part of why I think it's so important to heal is so that when we are being activists, when we are, you know, caught off guard in real life in a real life situation and someone's speaking out or someone's saying something that you want to stand up against you have the per cow you have the power and the courage to do that without immediately getting bitter and without resorting to personal attacks or things like that you have the strength to be the level-headed one and i'm not saying that we shouldn't allow ourselves to, to be angry i'm not saying that we need to be calm about everything. I'm not saying that we can't be shocked and I'm not saying that we need to have extensive emotional labor to educate other people because yes, a lot of educating about social activism and justice and human rights is something that people who are curious about it need to do for themselves. However, I do think even in our communities of activism, sometimes there's, you know, people in the in the LGBT community that are still biphobic or transphobic. You know, sometimes there's people that, that you care about and relate to, but there's still some growth to be done. So I'm not saying you need to go out there and heal yourself so that you can talk to bigots and talk to people who are insulting you. I'm saying that even in our communities, there's always growth, there's always progress, there's always more inclusion and more equality and more representation. So in order to come to all of that in a productive way, in a level-headed way, in a way where we're not competing with each other and instead we're coming together to fight something bigger than ourselves, that's that's the most important thing. That's what's gonna get us the furthest. That's where the power is. The power is in you know love and understanding and truth. And we really need to be able to deal with our own wounds and, our, and heal our own emotional past and our own traumas so that we can you know, help the next generation and so that we can help those that come after us and so that we can help ourselves and our communities to become more, you know, vigilant and stronger and more understanding and accepting. So that's what this is really all about. This is about avoiding activist burnout. This is about growing as human beings and this is about allowing ourselves to have emotional freedom. Um, so I really hope that you love this video. Thank you so much for watching and um, hanging out with me for a little while and my dog who's so afraid of this thunder right now. If you liked this video and want more content like it, please subscribe. I would really appreciate it and I will put up my other handles here. Also, if you don't know, I am a worthiness life coach, so I help you cultivate and develop your sense of self-worth so that you can go at life, you can achieve your goals, you can have the life that you truly deserve and understand that you are worthy. Um, so if you're interested in booking sessions or learning more about that, the link to that is also below in the description box. I wish you love and light and healing. Have a good one.